My name is Nicholas De Porcel, aka Depp. I am the owner and chief mastering engineer at Million Dollar Snare. Today we're going to be mastering Petty by Yakin, mixed by Bert G, an amazing record. When we intake a mix and I bring it into Sequoia, I can quickly analyze what I'm going to need to do to process that mix. Then going out of my computer through analog gear and doing analog processing and then coming back in to do additional digital processing. Let's play the mix. Go, 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 go. Cut all the noise, stop all the talk. All right, and now let's play the master. Go, 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 go. Cut all the noise, stop all the talk. I ain't in pace, I'm not looking at y'all. Don't try to hate. First thing we want to be able to do, a feature that I really like in Sequoia, I'm able to quickly normalize the mix and see how much headroom I have from zero. I have 5.65 dB of headroom. I can get a little bit of gain right off the bat. In our main, we have this gained up just about a dB, which means I have a lot to work with. Our next stage of processing, which is our ozone maximizer. So in crisp mode to just shave off some peak. So we can see right here we're just grabbing just grabbing some peaks we're gonna make we're gonna bring down the dynamic range of the overall mix and we're gonna make it a little bit more uniform um, after that my ceiling my output ceiling is set to negative 3 db and why i'm doing this is to give myself some headroom and analog so that i can do additional processing um, through through my desk here um, the next thing we are doing is we're using the the BX console SSL 9000J from Plugin Alliance. Um, notable things we're doing here, we're using the, the high pass filter at about 60. So uh, that that's more drastic. I usually don't have to use high pass filters, but since this low end was so prominent, um, it needed a little bit of help to get more presence just everywhere else. Um, and this is a great high pass filter because you really have to close your eyes and listen to it to find the sweet spot so we didn't get rid of the low end because it was very prominent um, and we we're also able to to accentuate the bass a little bit more because because of this processing the next thing we're doing here is um, we're using the the vpi multi-comp from cube tech and this is helping to accentuate the mid-range here so we're, we just have a 0.8 boost um, here in, in the middle of the frequency spectrum. Let's actually A, B this real fast. Turn this off. Go, 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 go! Cut all the noise, stop all the talk. Turn it back on. Go, 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 go! Cut all the noise, stop all the talk. And you can hear just that 0.8 dB boost in the grand scheme of all the processing that we're doing is adding a, a lot more presence there. The next thing we're using, which is interesting for this record, is this ozone stabilizer. We're actually using it in pop mode to get it to sound like, to get this record to sound just real modern um, with that top end shine without introducing harshness. And so I have the wet knob dialed up to, to about 20 here. And, and one notable piece of information here is since we don't want to just completely destroy that low end, um, we've dialed down the wet knob in in that low frequency range. So we've we've left mid and high at 100% and then low down to, to about 60 right here. From there, we're adding our first piece of saturation and that's that's giving us vibe here. Um, this this is the newfangled saturate. We're doing we're driving it about 2.5 dB. Um, the clipper shape is at about 54%, so it's not zero, and that's giving us more like a, a hard clipping on, on the transients, which is giving it that grit and that vibe, especially when, when the, the 808 comes in. Let's let's turn this on and off. Go, 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 go! Cut all the noise, stop all the talk. I ain't in pace, I'm not looking at y'all. Back on. Go, 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 go! Cut all the noise, stop all the talk. And you can instantly hear the the presence that that, that processing is giving it.
From our computer, we're gonna to start to do analog processing. We're using the Lynx Helo as a sound card with clocking that's happening from the Crane Song. The Crane Song is also doing the conversion. It's doing our digital to analog and our analog to digital loop. So we're coming out of the head quantum into our brain unit and the brain unit allows us to do insert switching. It's kind of like a patch bay. I can put any of these pieces of gear in any order I want. The first piece of gear that we have in the chain is our Golly Mastering EQ. And on both channels, this is set in mid side mode right now, but in the mid and side channels, we are just adding a little bit of air at around 10K. From here, we're going into our SPL tube vitalizer. The SPL tube vitalizer, ours is custom. We have custom tubes and microphonic dampeners that reduce the overall distortion that happens um, when the tu tubes are being driven. We just have the drive knob a little bit up. And, and again, that's giving us a little bit more presence, which this record needed. The low end is super crazy. So in order to get it to slap even harder and get more um, subharmonic information, this was great to help um, vitalize the sides as well as like add overall overall presence. From there, we're going into the NIF Soma and we're actually doing a lot of heavy lifting here. We have a shelf at 560, a 1 dB shelf, and we're lifting up that top end. Everything that's basically above the 808 to get this to cut more on, on little speakers. We're dialing back that super, super high, um, harsh top end at around 12K. So we have another shelf here down 1 D, dB. So from about 560 to about 12K, we're adding 1 dB just in the mid channel. And what this is doing is this is bringing up their vocals into a nice pocket where um, it can really shine over that prominent 808. On the side channel, what we're doing, and this is a super interesting move as well, is we have a shelf, it's a, it's a low shelf at 1K and it's bringing up everything from 1K down up 1 dB just in the side channel. And what this is doing is it's helping accentuate the music from that 808. So since the 808 is so prominent, we wanted to bring up the music right? That's like the warm part of the music, the real harmonic sounding part, um, while giving the vocals their own pocket. From there, we're going into mid side codec and adding just a little bit of side information from our brain unit. And then from there, we're going into a series of better maker limiters. So I actually have the version two limiter stacked before the version one. You can see on our screen here that I'm using this in um, color mode. So I, I, I have my limiter section, it's set to clipper only. I've given myself a 0.5 dB ceiling here. We're doing a little bit of clipping, hard clipping right here, 0.5 dB. And then we're using the color only on this mid channel. And, and we're, we just are adding a little bit of drive at about 125 hertz and a little bit of drive at around 10K. And again, this is just more saturation. We're adding a little bit more grit and character to the overall record. From there, we're going into our Better Maker Limiter V1. And this is the last limiter in our analog processing section. So. Um, we have 0.5 dB of headroom that we've given ourselves and with an input of 3.4 dB. So we're giving it 3.4 dB of gain. And you can see right here on our, um, well, if, we, if we look at our output meters, like we're getting close, we're getting close to zero, but we have enough headroom up here to where we're allowed additional processing when we come back in. So our first piece of digital processing coming back in from analog is the BXXL V2. And we're just um, centering up, we're, mon we're making this sub information mono down here. So I I'm using the mono maker at 41 Hertz. Um, and that's really just centering up that, that low sub. Um, a little bit of headroom on the, on the output and then from there, we're going into the newfangled Elevate limiter. And what's interesting here is we're adding a little bit more drive. So 
we have we have our, our it's basically another version of the the newfangled clipper um, as one of our last limiters. So we, we we're doing a little bit of processing. Um, we have the gain up two dB, and then we're using the clipper just slightly to give those transients a, a little bit more grit. From there, we are going into the TC Electronic MD4. I have this set in mid side mode. This helps us do um, really great processing on uh, and decouple the mid and side channels so that they breathe separately, which makes the overall record feel gigantic. And just a slight 0.4 boost in that 10K region where we're, we're adding a little bit more air. Looks like I was playing around with some other stuff here to, to see how this mid-range could come out a little bit more. We're on to our second to last limiter and we have the ozone limiter again in crisp mode, um, doing one dB of gain. We're using the soft clipper um, in, in this light mode at just 1%, transient emphasis, just 1%. And then we've turned up the stereo independence up to 15%. And so it's allowing for the left and the right channels to, to be processed a little bit differently. Um, if I turn this up too high, then that tight low end we had kind of gets decoupled, um, but turning it up just into this sweet spot, which was around 15% for this record, um, has allowed us to get the sides to sound really big and the record to sound 3D, all while keeping our, our the integrity of our low end. Very last thing I have here is just um, another stacked limiter with the true peak on at zero. And this is just catching some rogue um, true peak information. It's what are essentially overshoots from the previous limiter um, in non true peak mode. And I like how this sounds better than turning this up 0 0.0 and putting true peak on on that other limiter. The meticulous detail I've strived for in the studio also translates to Sequoia for me. My visualization layout and how everything is so custom for me and how I'm routing everything. I can switch from my stereo template to my stem mastering template. I can design my DAW the same way that I've designed my studio. Those features alone are the reason why Sequoia is my preferred DAW and the only DAW I will ever use to master.